up of this and I'll show you the easy way to tell male from female. Um, first off, pike differ, let me switch off this side, pike differ from pickerel um, and one of the easiest ways to tell because coloration doesn't always give it to you is if they cooperate. The scale pattern on a pike's gill only the scales stop right here on a pickerel they would extend all the way to the bottom of the gill cover but on a pike, they stop exactly halfway. On the outside chance, you get a, uh, a pike that crosses with a pickerel, which does happen. The scale pattern actually comes down three quarters of the way on the gill cover. Um, generally, the males have, I don't know if you can see it or not, but a, a, a yellower color than on the, uh, the white spots. Or um, if, it, if we had a female, uh, you'd be able to see the difference in color. It doesn't always hold true, but a lot of times uh, the males seem to have that toward the, the belly sort of a yellowish color. Um, this time of year it's actually very easy to tell male from female when you give them a squeeze and there's the milk. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't find it. Where don't, where's my uh, shot? Oh, there he is. The cloaca, I remember that from a... Yeah, you yes. got it. The, uh, now, if that was a female, she would be much, much uh, fatter because of the, uh, she'd be gravid with eggs. And um, uh, when you, if you were to give a female a little squeeze, obviously, if she's ripe and ready to spawn, the eggs will, will come out. Uh, generally, the pike spawn when, uh, right after ice out, when water temperatures start getting above 5 degrees Celsius, which is where they are now. Pike have very, very specific behaviors in that they find their way to spawning grounds by, um, by temperature. And I think to some degree they also use a sense of smell because there is a, f a fidelity uh, to very, very specific spawning grounds. Um, we've captured one marked female that had a numbered tag years ago and we got her four years in a row within just a few days of one another each year at the exact same trap at the entrance to one of our spawning marshes. So they do have a fidelity to, uh, to certain areas. We try to use uh, the larger females if we can get them in our marshes because they have a proven track record of being able to successfully spawn. Um, so we try to use eight pound to, and bigger females if possible. Um, sometimes like this year because we're low on numbers we don't have that luxury. We're going to take whatever we can get. Um, try to supply them with uh, uh, good spawning conditions in the marsh and, and really what that means is just uh, optimizing water levels and the pike would spawn on their own in the Bantam Lake system uh, up in the river up on the, uh, the sides of the river but what happens is that they spawn during the spring freshets and then the uh, uh, as the water goes down if it goes down too quickly the eggs don't get a chance to hatch and most of them uh, desiccate and uh, and die uh, so our job is just to try to help them get into spawning marshes that they are cut off from by roads or culverts, put them in, let them spawn, and then we try to maintain water levels as best as possible until the eggs hatch. Capture every year, and um, I'll show you what we do to age the fish, um, as well as uh, uh, keep track of just uh, uh, length and weight. And then when you couple that along with their age, we can keep a, a running record of, of how well the pike are actually growing in Bantam. Um, we do that for all of our management waters. And the, uh, one of the reasons for that is if we start to see over years a big difference in growth, something is, is going on and it's gonna, uh, it'll be the f one of the indicators for us to take a look at the population and see if uh, uh, there, we can determine what the reason for the difference in growth is. So we already determined that this was male and 722 and we'll do a couple of things you got the knife here so that I can 
I can watch this fish um, not through time but just for this year so we know when we take the adults out of the spawning marsh and transport them back to the lake after they have spawned I can tell if any other pike have gotten into our marshes by just giving these guys a real simple fin clip and that will all grow back albeit it'll be a little wavy and in fact it was a previous upper caudal he had been marked once before so this guy has actually been in one of our spawning marshes before because that that upper caudal fin the tail fin did have a clip on it from most likely last year the other thing we'll do where is, where is, is take a few scales off we do this in a very specific location so that when I'm aging pike in Connecticut, it'll be the same way a biologist ages pike in Europe or in, uh, in Alaska. Um, it's all the same. And those scales grow, it's a calcium matrix that gets laid down just like your bones um, and fingernails and everything else. And the calcium matrix changes as the year changes. So as they're feeding heavily, they have a very uh, uh, wide growth ring. And as, they, as the winter starts to set in, they start to, their metabolism slows down, their growth slows down. And just like rings on a tree, you can count the annual rings and determine the age of the, uh, determine the, age of the fish. Get a quick weight. Uh, we won't use this one in the uh, in the breeding marsh just because it's a precocious male. Um, okay. Yearling size. Uh, genetically, we're not sure what this fish is going to be doing. Um, if it's uh, you know predetermined for just poor spawning behavior, that's a genetic trait that we don't want to have in there. Um, you know, if we see this, if we happen to see this same fish, you know, three years from now much larger size um, then we will we will use that that mm -hmm. fish um, so this fish was spawned last year um, they uh, in this area and in most of Connecticut that's pretty typical size for a one-year-old uh, one-year-old fish um, generally 12 to 14 inches